Hi, this is Derek Braggs of Meticulous Word Ministries. I'd like to welcome you to our YouTube channel where we discuss all things biblical and focus on the distinction between religion and relationship. So please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. We welcome all comments and do not forget to like the videos. Until next time, God bless you and keep you. Take a look at the news, crime is at an all-time high, we can't keep pretending to be blind, no more prayer in the schools, now kids have one less good thing to choose, and now they're being killed in the classrooms, I wish I could take it all away. Testing one, two, three. Okay, well, this is Derek Brex, and I'm here to give you some weekly wisdom. Today we have something very special. Today we have something that is very special. We're talking about the ease of understanding the Bible. Okay, so this teaching was inspired um, by a conversation that I recently had with someone who explained to me that the Bible is so plain that anyone can understand it. And I want to know, do you believe this? Yes or no? Do you believe that the Bible is so plain that anyone can understand it? Okay. Because I've also talked to a lot of people who say they do not understand the scriptures. So today we will explore the scriptures in order to properly identify if any and everyone understands the Bible or does it require divine assistance? So we're talking about the ease of understanding the Bible, revelation versus education. Okay. Now this is, this is important today because everybody has access to the Bible. Everyone has access to the Bible. Everyone knows how to read. So as a result, everybody thinks they can pick up the scriptures, understand them and teach them. So we're going to talk about the ease of understanding the Bible, revelation versus education. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to enter into your presence. God, I ask that you will speak in me and through me to your people. And I pray that you will prepare their mind, make it open, make it receptive to your word so that they can retain it and apply it in their life. God, use me for your glory and for your glory only. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so. We're gonna we're gonna get into the scriptures. Uh, we're using Acts chapter eight, okay, beginning at verse twenty six. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia 
a eunuch of great authority on the Candace, queen of, Ethiop of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Okay, so a, a eunuch is a uh, emasculated man. So, you know, his uh, reproduct reproductive, you know, um, tools are gone, castrated, basically. Okay. And he is a proselyte because he is an Ethiopian and he's coming to Jerusalem for worship. So this lets you know that he's a, a, a proselyte. And a proselyte is basically someone who has, uh, in this time, converted to uh, Judaism. Okay, so someone that is not of Israel that has converted to Judaism. Okay, and it says that he had the charge of the queen's treasure. Okay. And he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge over all the treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Esaias the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. So the Holy Spirit directs Philip to this Ethiopian. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so he opened so open he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this. I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this. Of himself or of some other man. Now, of course, he's reading uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verses 7 and 8. Verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Then Philip opened his mouth and preached and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Okay, so this Ethiopian eunuch, let's understand this. He was an educated man, all right? He had authority from the queen. He was over the treasury. He was an ambassador. Let's understand that. But notice, when Philip, when Philip asked him a question, he did not ask him if he knew how to read because that wasn't important because frankly, anyone can read. Okay. Now, even though at that time, um, everyone was not educated. Okay. Edu everyone was not properly educated, well educated or whatever have you. Okay. So it wasn't like today where there's a, um, standard of education or standard education. Okay. But Philip did not ask him if he knew how to read. He was not asking him about his education. Please understand, I can't stress that enough. He is not asking him about his education. Instead, he asked him, understandest thou what thou readest? Do you understand what you are reading? Do you understand what you are reading? Proverbs 25 and 2 says, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Now, conceal here means to hide. 
So it is the glory of God to hide a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. So Philip is asking a spiritual question. Follow me. Philip is asking a spiritual question to a physical individual. He's asking a spiritual question to a physical individual. Do you understand? And what Philip is doing is he's applying a principle of God. We see it in Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So it's not enough just for you to read it. You need to understand it. Okay. So Philip is, when he asked the question, he's allowing this Ethiopian eunuch to answer his spiritual question. Okay. He's giving him the opportunity to, the opportunity to answer his spiritual question knowing that his education level, whatever it may be, still cannot provide the answer. Philip is giving him the opportunity to answer this question, knowing that his education cannot provide the answer. So watch this. The eunuch begins to apply what he has learned through education, okay? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a dumb, like a lamb dumb before his shearer. Uh, so he opened not his mouth in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth. So that seems simple. However, the eunuch asks, well, who is he speaking of? Is he speaking about himself or is he speaking about some other man? Okay, so now watch this. There is a reason education could not provide the answer because, remember, it was a spiritual question. Now, let's understand this. He could have given a literal answer, okay? So basically, he had like a 50-50 chance. He said, is he talking about him or some other man, right? And, and, and here's the thing. You will be surprised how many times people will question me after I've explained a matter, and they, they will say, but where does it say that at in the scripture? The scriptures don't say that. I'm not seeing that. That's because they can't get beyond the black and white, beyond the words. They have to take it literal. Okay? So this is why they say the scriptures don't say that. And that's what education does. It leaves you bound literally, pun intended. But if he would have given a literal answer, it still would not have provided the spiritual answer. Okay? It would have only led to another question, which is who? Who is it applying to? That would have been the next question. Who is it applying to? So watch this. So let's focus on the eunuch's answer to Philip's question. Let me say, uh, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how can I accept some man should guide me? Even though I know how to read, how can I understand this except some man should guide me? Okay, wait, let's, let's, let's pause for a second because this is important for you to understand too. So this, he's a proselyte. which mean that he converted to Judaism. Judaism is what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were. Remember, we've been, we've been covering this lately. So 
being converting to Judaism he does not understand who Christ is okay he does not understand who Christ is so he says how can I accept some man should guide me God here means to to teach to give guidance now keep remember keep remembering his answer is a result of his education and formal training from man his answer and what he got when he read it is the result of what man has taught him, okay? Yet, he's confused. Now, my question is, was it him? Or is this an example which applies to us today? Was it him when he said, I need guidance? Was this just he needed guidance? Or is this an example that applies to us even today. Do we really need to be guided when reading the scripture? Now, apparently, God has made provisions for your understanding and wisdom. And this was always addressed from the beginning. Now, watch this. Let me take you, let me give you a little piece of history, all right? So, when we go back to the Old Testament, all right? Now, God began to use prophets beginning with Moses. When we go back to the Old Testament, in Numbers 3, we see that he also used the tribe of Levi. Okay, Numbers 3, 10 and 12, it says, And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on their priest's office. Verse 12, And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel, instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine. So God said he separated the Levites. Okay, and the, the Levites replaced the firstborn males of Israel. Deuteronomy 10 and 8 says, at that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord. There it is. To stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless his name unto this day. Wherefore, Levi had no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance, according as the Lord thy God promised him. So, we're seeing that God separated Levi. He chose Levi to bear the Ark of the Covenant. So the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. So wherever the presence of God was, only the Levites could minister before him. When it came down to the tabernacle, only the Levites could 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 um could perform, you know, the sacrifices and stuff like that that were required. When it came down to going into the, the, the holies of holies, only the high priest, who is still a Levi, was able to go in there into his presence once a year, okay, on the, on the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, okay? So Levi, we see that Levi was responsible for taking care of the things of God, making sure that the people understood what was going on, okay? But it is when we get to um, the, the prophet Jeremiah, that God explains the provision further, makes it clear for our understanding. Jeremiah 3 and 15 says, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and Understanding now, uh, pastors here is a ruler and teacher, it's a ruler and teacher, not in the form that we think of a pastor today. It's a figurative, um, ruler and teacher, and or teacher. So, God is saying that He's going to give you a ruler or a teacher that is going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Remember, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, in all by getting, get understanding. So God said that, okay, I have, I am going to provide someone for you so that you can get that understanding. But that was in the Old Testament. When we get to the New Testament, 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. What did he give them for? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So here's your, here's your provision. Okay. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teaching. Apostles are going to be the ones that um, they, um, they, they are above a, just a mere Christian teacher. Okay. So they, of course, with the aid of the Holy Spirit, um, are able to perform certain things. Okay. But that 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 authority that 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 authority of apostle is above um, the other spiritual gifts. Okay, then you have prophets, which are concerned with uh, related to discernment. Okay, so the prophets here are the ones that are going to foretell like future events. Okay, then you have the evangelists. The evangelists are going to be the ones that's going to bring the gospel. That's going to Carol, uh, uh, carry the gospel. Okay. So we, we, just to give you an example, when you, when we go back to when Jesus was resurrected, the first evangelists were the women because they went and told the disciples that Jesus was risen. Okay. Understand that. So that's what an evangelist does. And you have pastors, which is, uh, Metaphorically, it's going to be uh, the presiding officer, uh, manager of a assembly, of any assembly is going to be the pastor here. So that's, that's please understand what we're talking about. So in the church, you have a pastor now, okay? Then you have teachers, and which when you're dealing with teach, teachers, um, they teach, okay? They teach with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me help you understand this. All of these offices perform their duties with the aid of the Holy Spirit. Without the aid of the Holy Spirit, they cannot perform their duties. Let me give you an example. The, the difference between a prophet and a fortune teller is the prophet is aided by the Holy Spirit, and whatever he tells is going to be connected to the Word of God. It's going to be connected to Christ. Whereas a fortune teller is going to tell about the future for their gain. Okay, so the fortune teller receives his who he's serving is, he or she is serving, is the enemy, is Satan. So, and I've said before, if you've heard a majority of my teacher teaching, Satan always has something similar to what God has. So God has the prophets. Satan has fortune tellers, psychics. And both of them are going to do the same thing. They're going to talk about a future event. They're doing the same thing. However, one is of God. So when he tells about these future events, it's going to be connected to Christ some kind of way. And that fortune teller, it is not. It can be connected to anything. It's for their, their, their gain. Okay. So let me say this. If God is supplying these offices, that means that they are divinely inspired. That's the Holy Spirit. Okay. This is important today. Because let's go back to what I said. Everyone today has a Bible. Everybody knows how to read. So everybody thinks that they can pick up the scriptures and teach. We have too many people with Bibles, but not enough people with Revelation. Too many people with the Bible, with access to the Bible. Too many people that know how to read. Too many people that are educated by man's standard, but not enough of them have the divine assistance, the revelation, okay? And somebody um, at an at a old church that I used to attend would always say, 
no matter how smart you are, God is at least as smart as you. Okay? So this means you have to be properly equipped to understand spiritual matters, especially in order to teach the scriptures. Okay? Please do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. I cannot tell you how many times, uh, uh, enough times. Do not be deceived. Do not listen to and or follow anyone who does not have the Holy Spirit. Again, do not listen to when it comes down to the Bible, when it comes down to the things of God, when it comes down to spiritual matters. Do not listen to and or follow anyone who does not have the Holy Spirit. Again, do not listen to and or follow anyone who does not have a Holy, do not have the Holy Spirit. When I was, when I was talking to the gentleman that was telling me that no, anybody can, you know, it's simple. The Bible is so plain. See, apparently he doesn't understand it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, to hide a matter. But it's the honor of kings to search it out. Because let me let me explain this to you. When, when someone says, okay, there's parts of the Bible that's missing. There's books of the Bible that are missing. And, and I say, well, so so what are you saying? So how can you, how do you know what's missing? And I will say, it doesn't matter what's missing. Well, how can you say that if you haven't read those books? I say, because the way that God, this, this system that he has is an integrated message system. Therefore, the, the messages are in different places. There is no one book that covers just such and such that, that covers. There's one book in the Bible that will cover salvation. One book in the Bible that will cover uh, baptism. One book in the Bible that will cover forgiveness. Nah. That's why it says line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Because it's not just in one place. It's all over the Bible. So therefore, you can take out an entire book and still understand what the message is. Still understand God's plan of redemption. That plan of salvation. So when you, even when we, uh, let me say this, even when we go back to Isaiah, what the, what the Ethiopian eunuch was reading in Isaiah, see, there's a reason why Philip picked up where he left off when he was saying that, who is this, you know, who is this, this man that he's referring to? Is he talking about himself or is, he, is, is Isaiah speaking of himself or is Isaiah speaking of another man? Now, see, let, let me explain this to you. Those that, that take the scriptures literally will say that, okay, this book of Isaiah, he, oh, he's speaking about himself. See, that's literal when you can't go beyond that. However, the spiritual, what God has hidden, that revelation that is re required to understand the scriptures says, no, nah, he's not talking about himself. He's a prophet. He's speaking of a future event. So what did Philip do? The scripture says that Philip, at that point, Philip began to teach him Jesus. At that point where he left off at, Philip began to teach him Jesus. Why? Because all of this is about Jesus. Every book of the Bible is about Jesus. Jesus, from the time he's introduced in Genesis chapter three, even when you go back to chapter two and see the revelation, I mean, the, the, the genealogy of Adam, there's a genealogy for a reason, because that genealogy, that lineage is leading to someone very important. That's going to be Jesus. So being that, again, that he was a proselyte, Judaism, he wouldn't have understood who Jesus was. And you know what? As a matter of fact, I'm going to I'm going to do some continuing uh, lessons on on this, the ease of understanding the Bible. I'm going to give you some more examples. I didn't want this to be too long. OK, but so the, the Holy Spirit, 
which job is to teach you and guide you, told Philip, who is a man of God, hey, there's somebody, I need you to connect with this Ethiopian eunuch. Go over and talk to him. So when he went over and talked to him, he saw him reading. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? And, and the, the eunuch said, no, I, I don't understand. But how can I understand if some man doesn't teach me? And Philip began to teach him Christ, would have, which would have been different from what he knew and what he believed. Okay. So um, I hope that, that this has been enlightening for you as always, because it's these little things that allow the book to open up. If you don't understand the meticulous things that God has put there, if you don't understand the foundation, if your foundation is not uh, established, you can't move past that. It's just like understanding how to, to read. If you don't understand the, the vowels, the, the difference be a, between a consonant and a vowel, uh, the alphabet, uh, the difference between a consonant and a vowel and the sounds that they make, then you won't be able to read. You can't get, get past that little thing, those sounds, because that's necessary for when you get ready to put these words together. Okay? So, understanding and all thy getting, get understanding. This is not a literal book. Some things can be literal, but it's literal, it's figurative as well. Some things are an allegory. There are examples in this book. Okay? Um, so, it's it's important that you understand there are things that are symbolic in the book. There are things that are types or a representation of someone or something. You need to know the difference when you're reading this book. And if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you will not understand these differences. You will just be taking the book, reading it at face value, and literally, literally trying to come up with an meaning with a meaning for what you are reading. You are just reading words. You are just reading stories if you do not understand, if you do not have the revelation. And that revelation can only be provided by God. That revelation cannot be provided by anyone or anything except God. So please do not be deceived. Do not, again, do not follow anyone who has not been filled with the Holy Spirit. Do not follow anyone whose job, whose, whose job has not been ordained by God, who, who has not been called by God to perform this task of teaching his people. Okay? So let's pray. Father, I pray that your people... Um, Follow your voice and your voice alone. I ask that you strengthen them with the gospel. Condition their mind.